एवरी वन वेलकम टू नॉलेज हब आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल तो इन टूडेज वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट डेटा टाइप्स इन सी शॉप वट आर वैल्यू टाइप्स एंड रेफरेंस टाइप वट इज टाइप कन्वर्जन एंड इट्स टाइप्स विदाउट एनी फर्दर डिले लेट स्टार्ट द वीडियो तो वट आर डेटा टाइप तो डेटा टाइप स्पेसिफाई द टाइप्स ऑफ डेटा दैट अ वेरिएबल कैन होल्ड सी शॉप इज अ स्ट्रॉन्गली टाइप लैंग्वेज सो देर फॉर एवरी वेरिएबल एंड ऑब्जेक्ट मस्ट हैव डिक्लेयर टाइप proper utilization of correct data types allows developer to make the most of the language so in c sharp the data type divided into two categories primitive and the non primitive type primitive type primitive types are the predefined data types and these are further categorized as shown in the diagram byte short int long bool decimal string object so these are the further types under the primitive types next we have primitive type range as we know that there are multiple types under the primitive data type so each type has some range the range specify the minimum and the maximum value that a particular type can store so here you can see in the image the range for byte is 0 to 255 so it is unsigned it means it starts with the 0 and its maximum range is 255 next we have the signed byte so it is 8 bit and its range starts from minus 128 to 127 similarly the range will increase as we move to the data type as the number of bits increases so next we have how to calculate the range actually so this is the formula to calculate a range of a particular type for signed data type the formula is minus 2 raised to power n 2 2 raised to power n minus 1 for unsigned the formula is 0 to 2 raised to power n minus 1 where n is number of bits non primitive data types these are the user defined types so as you see in the diagram classes enum interfaces delegate array etc are the non primitive data types now we have value type a data type is called as a value type if it holds a data value within its own memory space so it simply means that the variable of these data type directly contain the values for example consider we have a variable int i which has a value 100 so as you can see in the diagram here so here we have integer i and it has some memory allocation in the ram with the address this one 0 x 239220 and at this memory location we have stored the value 100 for this integer so the system stores the 100 in the memory space allocated for the variable i the same that i explained in the image here all the primitive data type except string and the object that are example of value types and value types are always maintained in the system stack so if you assign actual value of data are stored in the stack reference type a reference type doesn't store its value directly instead it store the address where the actual value is stored so in simple words the reference type contains a pointer or a reference to the another memory location that holds the actual data for example here you can see the string variable s has value hello so system select a random location in memory and uh, for the variable s the value of variable s is the address of the location where we have the actual value so the reference type stores the address of the location where the actual value is stored instead of the value itself two primitive types string and object and all the non primitive data types are the examples of reference type reference types are simply maintained in the manage heap but it also uses stack to store the reference of heap now we have type conversion type conversion is a process to convert one type to another type 
सो कन्वर्जन इज बेस्ड ऑन टाइप कंपेटेबिलिटी एंड द डेटा कंपेटेबिलिटी सो देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ कन्वर्जन इन सीशा इम्प्लीसिट कन्वर्जन एंड एक्सप्लीसिट कन्वर्जन implicit conversion in implicit conversion the compiler will make the conversion for us without asking compiler checks for the type compatibility at the compilation time explicit conversion so in explicit conversion we specifically ask the compiler to convert the value into another data type clr checks for the data compatibility at the run time explicit conversion is carried out using cast operator so when we cast one type to another we deliberately force the compiler to make the transformation microsoft dot net provide three ways of type conversion using parsing convert classes and using the explicit cast operator next we have boxing and unboxing boxing the so boxing is a process in which we convert a value type to a reference type For example, we have one integer variable, int i is equal to ten, and we assign this value to object type. So this process is called as boxing. So we assign a primitive type, that is integer i, or you can say the value type to the reference type, that is object. And the unboxing, it is the reverse process of the boxing. So in which we convert a reference type to the value type. so for example we have one object obj with value 10 and we are assigning that object to the integer variable so let's have a quick demo so here we will start to use all the types here and try to print the value so let's use the integer type and i is equal to 10 then i have float it has some value 12.5 and we need to specify capital f or small f at the end so that it should be treated as a for float not as a double another we have double i will use a value for that 15.46 then i will use decimal in decimal we have value 18.98 and we need to add capital m or small m at the end otherwise it will treat it as a double now we have a uh, long and we can assign a value is 32 right so what i am going to do i am going to print the value of each type each variable actually so i am using the console class dot right line and going to print value integer i is equal to i okay so at then what we need to do we need to call console dot read key so that we can hold the console output window now let's run the program so here you can see we are getting the output so in integer i we assign the value 10 and we are able to see that similarly for float we have assigned the value 12.5 in case of double we assign the value 15.46 and in case of decimal we assign the value 18.98 and in case of long we assign the value 32 okay similarly we can use char also so in char we can assign any character it is a single character any that we want to use and we can use string also to print a proper sentence so for string we can use str we can print anything hello world 
right and similarly okay save the changes run the program again here we go so we get the output we assign two new values one for character and one for string and we are able to see in the output window so this is about the primitive data type so that we are using here string in floor double decimal so if we want to use non primitive data type so we need to create the instance of a class similar way that uh, we discuss in case of uh, oops concept we are creating the instance of a class okay so also what we will do we will do uh, conversion here so first we will do the implicit conversion okay so in case of implicit conversion what I am going to do I am using a variable that is called b which store the value of i that is integer so this is called implicit conversion okay so here I will explain two things also narrowing and widening narrowing what does it mean actually narrowing means that when we assign the larger data type to smaller data type okay next we have widening so it means that when we assign smaller data type to larger data type so in case of narrowing we are moving to the smaller data type so in case of widening we are moving to the larger data type so in this example long b is equal to i integer is for byte actually but in case of long it is doubled that is 8 byte so what we are doing here we are performing the widening operation and we are moving from smaller data type to larger data type so in case of widening the implicit conversion happen so in case of narrowing explicit conversion happen okay so in next example what I am going to do I will assign int g with value long uh, this one long l so here you can see we are getting some error cannot implicitly convert type long to int and explicit conversion exists so here we need to use the cast operator so how we can use that we need to use these parentheses and inside that we need to specify the type in which we want to convert so I want to convert the long type to the integer so that's why I have mentioned here integer inside the parentheses I hope the concept of implicit and explicit conversion is clear to all of you okay next we will cover boxing and unboxing first we will see boxing so in boxing as per the definition we are converting a value type to reference type so we have value type int i is equal to 10 this one so i will assign this value to a object what i am going to do i am creating a object obj 
and assign a value i that's it so when what i going to do here i will print the value console dot right line and object obj is equal to value obj let's see the output so here you can see we get the object with the value 10 so where this value 10 coming from it is coming from the integer i variable here this one okay next we will discuss unboxing so unboxing it simply means reversing the boxing process so this is the boxing and this is the unboxing now so what i am going to do i create integer variable with value int k and i am going to assign obj so here we are getting error because we need to do explicit conversion here also because we are moving to the larger data type to smaller one so here obj in which data type we uh, we want to convert that is int and i am going to print the value of k let's save our changes run the program again so here you can see we are getting the output in k we have the value 10 now fine so we have covered all the topic that we discussed today so what we have covered so far we have covered what are data types what is primitive and non-primitive data types what are value types and its examples what are reference type and its example what is type conversion and its types and what is boxing and unboxing that's it in this video thank you for listening